Isaiah chapter 25, 25th book of the Bible, Lamentations. O Lord, thou art my God. I thought it ought to be. My God. There are many places in the Bible that we've read so far. It says, Your God, thy God, should be my God. I will exalt thee, and nothing else. Pretty good shoes so far. I will praise thy name. My better names of sports and athletes and actresses and actresses. And for thou hast done wonderful things. If you could write down all the things that God has done for you. How much? How long would that list be and how wonderful will that list be? And don't forget all the things that he has done for you that you don't even know what he has done for you. Thy counsels, his word of old, are faithful and true. Thy word is true. The Gospel of John said. For thou hast made of a city and heat. Nope, destroy the city. Here's a city, now it's just a heat. Of a defense city, a ruin. There's supposed to be a strong city. It's ruined. A, play, a palace of strangers to be no city. It shall never be built. Babylon's like into that. A city that will be destroyed and never built again. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. I mean after destruction comes glorifying God. Do you realize in the, in the book of Acts Every time there was persecution against the saints of God, people joined the church. When you've got troubles and problems, you're going to reach out to somebody, and it should be God. When your life is wonderful and great, who are you going to call to? Who are you going to call to nobody because everything's great? You really want to have a revival in America, you got to start calling for some destruction, ruin, eaves. Then maybe you start getting people calling upon the Lord. But then again, we had that 9-11 and that didn't last long at all. The city of the terrible nations shall fear thee. It's not happening in America. They're not fearing God with everything going on. They're blaming El Nemo and Mother Nature and Weathers and Obama. For thou has been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm. That's from the hymn that we sing. From the heat, desert heat where they are, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. So in troubles, in problems, brings you closer to God. A lot better than prosperity. Now you can talk to God, you can still read your Bible and prosperity, but you're not going to really depend on God. When you're in pain and suffering, that brings you to God. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers. The noise. What is the noise? I don't know. War cry. Shouting. As the heat in a dry place. Even the heat with the shadow of a cloud. The branch of the terrible ones. The terrible ones keep showing up shall be brought low some kind of heat wave coming associated with terrible ones the bible speaks in the tribulation is going to be scorching heat from the sun and in this mountain jerusalem shall the lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things. 
well-fed animals plump and juicy vegetation a feast of wine on the leaves now leaves is the settlement at the bottom of a liquid the gross part you know, you fill you fill a bottle up with something and you put it on the shelf and all that get, gets down to the bottom that's what the leaves is the fat things full of marrow. Now, when you look up the dictionary, yeah, that's the part of a bone, but that's not the best definition. The best definition with the verse is the best part of wine on the leaves, well refined. And he, God, will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people the kind of covering on the mountain that God has to remove and the veil that is spread over all nations and see chapter 28 verses 18 to 20 which will be coming up in a few days so God's going to provide a feast and he's going to remove this covering he will God will swallow, 1 Corinthians 15, 54, up death in victory. Well, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. Revelation 7, 17 and 21, 4. So again, we are now still in the book of Revelation. There's more to Revelation than the book of Revelation. And there are people out there, oh, I don't read the Old Testament because, you know, it's, you're missing so much. I'm just studying, reading over it. There are churches out there that probably study Revelation. And when they get to 22, they go back to verse chapter 1 again and just start over. Or probably jump to Matthew. And in Matthew 24, and ooh, the, what it could be the end days. Isaiah, 25 chapters. How about Genesis 1 to Isaiah 25? All the things we've seen about the Antichrist. All the things we've seen about the second advent. All the things we have seen. Wonderful, remarkable. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, removes the curse. There's the millennium. For the Lord has spoken it. All right, the Lord has spoken it. He hasn't spoken Revelation yet. He has spoken Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and go all the way to Isaiah. There's yet more revelation in Isaiah, but there's been so much revelation now. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. There he is. Who? The God that swallowed up victory. Well, guess what? It's Jesus Christ. We have waited on him. Who have the Jews been waiting for? They've been waiting for the Messiah. Uh, in Revelation, he comes on a horse. King of kings, Lord of lords. Guess who that is? That's Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? He is capital G, capital O, capital D. He will save us. What does Jesus mean? Jehovah saves. This is the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Get out of the Jehovah Witnesses. They are liars. They are anti-Bible. And from what I'm told, they don't even open the Bible. We have waited for him. True, the Jews are waiting for the Messiah today. Problem. 
He's already came. We will be glad. We will be glad and rejoice in His salvation. Man, in the millennium, it's gonna be breakout singing to God. You think, you know, Hosanna when he comes walking into Jerusalem. You think that's great? They're never gonna say crucify him. It's gonna be a thousand years of rejoicing and blessing and this wonderful thing that you can go plant tomato seeds and have tomatoes within a couple seconds. In the millennium, I'll be the one with the broken out face. I get so many tomatoes in here, man. The, the edges of my lips are all broken out. I, that's how you're gonna be able to tell me I'll be stained of, of red from, from tomatoes. It's a time of praising the Lord Jesus. This, what, what do you think we're gonna be there for a thousand years? What stock market? Who you are? Automobiles? I don't think so. Wouldn't it be great? I don't know what the world is going to be like in the millennium. It's going to be all flat and Jerusalem is going to be a mountain. But as far as distance is America to Israel today, wouldn't it be great if you could just hear all over the earth singing and praising the Lord? No matter where you go. You know, like you hear these idiots with their stereos in their car. Boom, 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 boom. Man, you can hear them coming three or four blocks away. Wouldn't it be great three or four blocks away you just hear them praising Jesus without drums? No contemporary music singing to Jesus. I mean, singing to Jesus. That'd be a wonderful time. For in this mountain, Jerusalem, shall the hand of the Lord rest. You know, last time he rested was back in Genesis chapter 2. I don't ever read anywhere else he rested. He tried to sleep on a boat and the disciples came over and woke him up after he told them, we will go to the other side. They did not need to wake Jesus up. And Moab, that's one of the children of Lot, shall be trodden down under him. Why? Because they're against the Jews. They have fought against the Jews. When Babylon came in, the Jews that tried to run away, Moab turned them over. Edom turned them over. Moab is against them. Shall trodden down under him, even as straw is trodden down for the dunghill. Now, evidently, before they make a dunghill, they put straw down. And they walk on it, I guess. I don't know. I never made a dunghill. And he, God, shall spread forth his hands in the midst of them, as he that swimmeth spreadeth forth his hands to swim. That's as far as they will go. And he shall bring down their pride, uh, get rid of pride, together with the spoils of their hands. Got to get rid of pride. Pride is not God. No Christian should say, I am proud of you, or I've got pride. No. 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 It's a bad word. That's one of those words you'll be judged for. And the fortress of the high fort of thy wall shall he bring down. It's not your fortress. It's not your armament. It's him. The Lord Jesus Christ. Lay low and bring to the ground, even to the dust. You won't need a military power. You won't need uh, uh, watchtowers. <laughs> Did that purpose. You won't need guns. You won't need arrows. You've got the Lord Jesus Christ. And those that do rise up and go against you, he'll just tell you to go jump in the lake. And you just jump into hell. So the Millennium Passage in Isaiah as we learn more and more what's going to happen in the millennium a complete outcry of singing and praising Jesus Christ glory to God never missing a note singing it all properly all the verses 